Uh, now, before we go on to actually writing the mail script, one thing you might be thinking to yourself is, well, what if I mistype that attribute? Then isn't that also kind of like having things name based where we're looking for a specific string and it doesn't match? And yeah, you're right. And you you can't 100% get away from it. You know, somewhere along the line, there's got to be some assumptions, like I said. And one is is that the pull vector marker is going to have, and the pull vector controller is going to have that attribute, and that your IK hand or IK controller and your IK marker is going to have this attribute, and that they're going to be connected. So what happens if you misspell that controller or that uh, not that controller that attribute? it's just not going to work so how do we make this more reliable and more importantly how do we get this to be more uh, automated obviously it didn't take a lot of setup but any any time you spend doing a redundant task is one boring and two leaves room for bugs and mistakes so we're going to talk a little bit about automating this and if you open up the mail script um, it's going to be the double helix IKFK switch script. I got it up right here. The first section here are going to be uh, some low level procs that are basically being uh, shared by some of the earlier stuff. These are all local procs here. We're going to skip down here and we're going to go to the setup procs. And one thing you'll see that I have a proc here for adding the pull vector marker. And so what I would do is instead of typing that command out by hand I would run this proc if you know I source it and I don't type the proc name in correctly it's obviously just simply not going to run um, but if I want to run the proc then I'm going to get a consistent name each and every time and even if I remember that this is the name there's always a chance I uh, you know a slip finger hits an extra key and or you know, you're, you're brain farting that day and, and you spell vector with an A, you know, whatever, you know, parting a little too much last night, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, if you if you run it through, and, and again, this is stupid simple. It's only like two lines of code here within the proc, but it prevents bugs. It prevents accidents. It prevents... Um, accidentally typing in the wrong name and then again the same thing for the uh, IKFK switch marker now if you come down here I have this proc set up for creating the pull vector marker and I'll take the, the pull vector control and first I'll check to make sure um, it exists you know just a little error checking and it'll add the attribute to it, add our pull vector marker attribute to it. It will get its translations in global space. Then it will create an empty group node which will be our our, our marker. And then this little fun it calls this function which is up at the top and this one basically is going to go through the connections through the pull vector constraint to find the IK handle. And once you find the IK handle, it is going to find the start joint. Why do we need the start joint? Well, remember what we said, all the rotation is going to come from up here. So we need to find the start joint so we know where to parent that marker to. And we find the start joint by finding the IK handle. And find the IK handle by taking our pull vector control and seeing what it's connected to through that pull vector constraint. Once it's created, um, we parent it to that start joint. Uh, we make sure it's got the attribute on it as well. We call that command again. Then we connect them. And then we snap the, uh, the marker to the position of the pull vector control. If you come out of here, there's another proc that says set up pull vector marker. Now, what's different with this? Well, um, Short answer is this will basically run the last proc we talk about, which um, it's actually down here, which will create the marker. That does all the work of creating the marker, putting it where it needs to be, connecting it, everything else. And then it simply just locks the translation, the rotation, and the scale. And there's, again, if you go up 
to the top we have these little procs that that do those little jobs right there for us it just saves us having to set like three set, uh, set adders for each axis of the translation another three for the rotation so instead of becoming you know nine lines of code that we'll use over and over again it becomes three lines of code that we will use over and over again it's basically what it boils down to and then we have a similar function here for creating an IK control marker now what this will do is instead of connecting it to the joint like I did it'll actually create an empty null and we'll do pretty much the same thing that the pull vector one did except it will um, take rotation rotation to account as well and that's really the only difference to that but with these procs I can do this task much much more quickly and I can even um, if I really wanted to get fancy I could come up with a, a system to automate the whole thing where say for example I selected the IK handle I hit a button the IK handle could find the pull vector uh, at uh, the, the pull vector control through its constraint and then automatically run the pull vector uh, marker setup for me and everything like that so uh, there's plenty of room to play with this but as you can see with the mail script um, even this simple task has been uh, automated and that's really all we need to do with the rig at this point um, we're we have what we need set up so we can feed the information to the mail script to handle the IKFK switching the rest of it's really going to be done in mail so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next video and we will discuss the mail script that handles the IKFK switching